Today I'm going to be talking about positive cash flow in investment properties. Myth or reality? Can you achieve a property investment that actually throws you more cash than you have to put into it? It is possible, but I'll talk about some of the features of it. First of all, a definition of positive cash flow. So a positive cash flow investment property is where all of the costs of holding the property, including interest on the full purchase price and all the running expenses, are more than covered by the rent that's coming in. In other words, you have a cash surplus after paying for all the costs associated for that property. The property is actually creating money for you. Sounds great, and that's what we do property investment for. Um, but not many investors actually achieve that. All right, let's look at the features or how to get it. But maybe I'll start off by saying, if you look at the average property in Perth, it has a rental yield of around 4.5%. Now that is a gross rental yield. And a lot of people look at that and say, hey, 4.5%, okay, that's good. But they forget the expenses. So operating expenses on a rental property are typically between 40 and 50% of all of the income. And so that 4.5% gross rental yield will very quickly get cut back to maybe 3% uh, or even less net yield. At 3% net yield, if you are borrowing the full purchase price at 5%, you are not going to have positive cash flow. In fact, you're going to have minus 2%. You've got 3% net yield, you're paying 5% interest, you're going to be losing money on that property. So. In general, positive cash flow is not achievable if you just buy a median priced property in Perth at the moment. So then some people say, I know what, I will achieve positive cash flow by putting in a big deposit because that way I won't have as large a loan and so it'll be positive cash flow. Well, it's sort of technically true because you don't have the debt and it may well be throwing off the cash. But it's not actually true positive cash flow because you can apply that principle to almost any investment, uh, out, even outside of property, and say if you put enough cash in uh, of your own, it's going to generate positive cash flow. But what we're looking at in investment circles is an investment that pays for itself. In other words, with no deposit, this property will generate surplus cash for me even if I borrow the entire purchase price. That's positive cash flow. A large deposit is not positive cash flow. The next thing I want to talk about is back to that issue of rental yield uh, and gross versus net yield. A lot of people think that when you have rent like $400 a week, you times it by 52. So they get that 400, they times it by 52. What does that make it? 20,800 and they say to themselves, hey, I'm going to get $20,800 of rent every year. You're probably not going to. In your budgeting for property, you need to allow for three or four weeks vacancy every year, particularly in slow market conditions like what we have right now. You're typically not going to have rent earned every single week of the year. So 48 weeks is usually a good figure to use um, for budgeting uh, when working out what kind of cash flow is going to be generated. Then you also have the issue of non-payment. So let's just say you fix the vacancy issue, you've got a tenant, they're in there. It's quite possible that at some stage they're going to default in rent and we may not eventually get that. So we're going to lose maybe one or two weeks out of that year to tenant default. So if you want to be even safer, use 46 weeks for your budgeting calculations on how much rent you're going to be getting for that property. It's never rent times 52, remember that.